Namaste World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. The time has finally come. We are studying the Ashtavakra Gita on this channel. Mm. Today we are studying the first chapter with you, Instruction on Self-Realization. Oh yeah, we are very much looking forward to this. So of course it came up while we were watching Ramanan Sagar's Ramayan and Ashtavakra as we discovered, is a crippled sage. And then he was requested by King Janak. And we don't actually, we haven't gotten confirmation as to which Janak it was because it's a title. So we don't know for sure if it was Lord uh, or Masita's father or not. It could have been a different one, but that's not what's important. What's important is that this Janak was a seeker. Yeah, seeker of truth, seeker of enlightenment, seeker of realization of the absolute truth of reality and very much devoted to that quest. And he asked all sorts of people, but finally he deferred to the wisdom of Ashtavakra, which is what we're going to do as well. But before we do, we need to prepare our minds. We need to remember that we are seekers and that we have not realized the goal as yet. And that is perfectly okay. We are in this realm of, of existence. Um, and that's the way it is. And it's also the Kali Yuga. So just to be fortunate enough to be drawn to such teachings is such a great blessing. And we got to remain humble in our quest and forget about everything that we think we know. This video right here is not for everybody so if you don't think you want to dive into the highest spiritual truth please do not join us and that's okay if you're not ready you're not ready but for those of us who are we are going to be reading which version are we reading sabina it's a translation by bart marshall mm, yes and we're going to link to the it's a free pdf a free pdf we found online we link uh, to it in the description so you can follow along yes yeah, so you can follow along with us um and i'm going to take the role of ashtavakra and sabine is going to be janak, janak. <laughs> um so very much like we did when we did the bhagavad gita we read it last may on this channel and those videos are still up you can check it out if you need more more wisdom with us. So we read it the same way, where Sabina was Arjun and I was Sri Krishna. And of course, I know that I'm not these amazing beings in reality, but I'm going to do my best in my understanding at this time on my journey. And then we're going to talk about the teachings. So if you find that interesting, and if you are on the spiritual journey and you want to join us on this quest, then here we go. Take a deep breath. Settle the mind, settle the body, become innocent once again, drop all beliefs you have, everything you're clinging on to, and let the beginner's mind emerge, full of curiosity, being open to whatever you hear. Enjoy the reading and then we look forward to your comments and the discussion. Chapter 1 Instruction on Self-Realization Master, how is knowledge to be achieved, detachment acquired, liberation attained? Ashtavakra said, To be free, shun the experiences of the senses like poison. Turn your attention to forgiveness, sincerity, kindness, simplicity, truth. You are not earth, water, fire, or air, nor are you empty space. Liberation is to know yourself as awareness alone, the witness of these. Abide in awareness with no illusion of person. You will be instantly free and at peace. You have no caste or duties. You are invisible, unattached, formless. You are the witness of all things. Be happy. <laughs> yeah, so already we're getting a feel for this, because if you haven't 
heard or you're not aware of this, Sabine and I did study Buddhism for quite a bit, and this is extremely very, very similar, obviously, because the highest truth is the same. No matter which realized being is teaching it, they're going to be teaching it in their own way, in their own language, in their own cultural understanding. Um, because, yeah, the Buddha was really teaching Buddha nature and emptiness. So it doesn't mean that we don't exist. It means that we exist different from how we perceive that we exist, right? So going into the teachings of consciousness and awareness is always fundamental. It's primary. So when you're diving into that and then through meditation and contemplation on the source of your perception and awareness and even how you perceive the senses like awareness is primary because without awareness you wouldn't be able to be aware of anything you wouldn't even know that you exist so how could you say that you exist without awareness it is fundamental to conscious life itself and that's ultimately what we are is living beings so right away here Ashtavakra is saying that you are the awareness you are the consciousness there's a that's what's aware of everything so boom right and wrong pleasure and pain exist in mind only they are not your concern you neither do nor enjoy you are free hmm very similar to what we learned in the Bhagavad Gita right there's the modes of material nature and those are operating but that's not you so you're not the doer and you're not the enjoyer that's the bodies level of consciousness whatever that may be tamas rajas sattva the modes of material nature are operating this is a material body but that's not us we're the awareness beyond so yeah very cool and then pleasure and pain exist in the mind and this is great because it's coming from ashtavakra who is disabled mm -hmm. he's got the eight deformities but that's not affecting his beingness right mm -hmm. he's able to seems like he's happy he's teaching he's sharing this wisdom so what do we have to complain about you are the solitary witness of all that is forever free your only bondage is not seeing this wow the thought i am the doer is the bite of a poisonous snake to know i do nothing is the wisdom of faith be happy a single understanding, I am the one awareness, consumes all suffering in the fire of an instant. Be happy. I actually love that he's teaching be happy yeah. so much because that's also what all the sages are really teaching. Satguru, yeah. ultimately, is always about joy, right? We got to be joyful, right? And then when you see like genuine, true gurus and teachers, they're always just radiating this happiness. Yeah love joy and as seekers yeah we want to evolve to that level how do we do it well we do what is being taught you are unbounded awareness bliss supreme bliss in which the universe appears like the mirage of a snake in a rope be happy yeah so snake in a rope is a classic example of delusion right we don't see the reality we can mistake a rope for being a snake when actually there's only a rope there and he's saying that the whole universe is like an appearance it's a mirage it's a dream right uh, it's like the reflection of the moon in water so classic examples that we don't see clearly right mm -hmm. so we need to be free of this material existence even while we're still embodied and that's okay to do right so we're in the world but we're not of it it is true what they say you are what you think if you think you are bound you are bound if you think you are free you are free hmm. just take a moment to let that sink in hmm. yeah we choose we have the power to choose that. Hmm. You are self, the solitary witness. You are perfect, all-pervading, one. You are free, desireless, forever still. The universe is but a seeming in you. 
Yeah, and this is tying into the infinite field of consciousness itself, which, yeah, our individual existence appears to be limited, right? But the higher consciousness, the one that's connected to the absolute reality, yeah, it's beyond all of that. So the whole universe is inside this field of, field of consciousness and it's all pervading, right? Yeah, and there is no desire. It's forever still. It's all pervading. It's one. It's perfect, right? And without it, nothing would exist. Meditate on this. I am awareness alone. Unity itself. Give up the idea that you are separate, a person, that there is within and without. Yeah, so this seeming duality, in reality, there's only one and we don't even have to label it it's just all appearances arising as one magical myriad display one thing happening you have long been bound thinking i am a person let the knowledge i am awareness alone be the sword that frees you wow hmm. like the burning sword of wisdom mm -hmm. You are now and forever free, luminous, transparent, still. The practice of meditation keeps one in bondage. Uh, oh, interesting. There you can comment on. Hmm. Yeah, so not too sure about this one. From my perspective, I guess it depends what you're using the meditation for. But once you've gotten the realizations that you need through meditation and then glimpsing the awareness, then it's about choosing to be free, right? But if you remain in meditation, you're kind of tying yourself down in the sense that even though you can choose to be free now, maybe you're trapping yourself thinking that you're still not free. Right, because you need to keep practice in meditation in order to be free, but you're not making the choice that he says earlier to be free. So then the meditation practice in that end actually binds you more because you're using it to limit yourself, right? Wow. That's kind of what it sounds like. Let me know what you guys think about that one. Yeah, yeah. deep, right? I don't think I've ever heard the practice of meditation keeps one in bondage, but I can see how it's possible. You are pure consciousness, the substance of the universe. The universe exists within you. Don't be small-minded, right? So this is the fundamental nature. The Buddha nature, Krishna consciousness, Christ consciousness, the infinite field, and we're a part of it. You are unconditioned, changeless, formless. You are solid, unfathomable, cool, desire nothing. You are consciousness. That which has form is not real. Only the formless is permanent. Once this is known, you will not return to illusion. Fundamental spiritual teachings here, right? So everything is like a dream. It's an appearance to the mind. And we know that everything that we seem the solid matter is really like 99.999 repeating percent empty space, right? So we've already discovered this scientifically. And then if you really contemplate that, you see that everything is energy. And where does this energy come from? Well, there's something that it's arising from. And then that is the empty space itself, which we also discovered scientifically that even like a, you know, like a tiny cubit of empty space is like infinitely more powerful than anything within matter. So what is the power of empty space? Well, it's, in my mind, it's consciousness. Let me know how you guys understand that. Um, yeah, so then there's, you can picture the infinite field of consciousness. And if you're attached to a creator deity, like Vishnu perhaps, and then how the universe is coming out of his navel, you know, as he's resting, you know, on the milky ocean, right? It's like, where do, what does that symbolize? That symbolize big mind manifesting and everything within the universe as the big mind is manifesting from these 
thoughts, the power of thought, but not like thought like we think, but the power of vision, right? So it's like a dream, but appears very real to the beings in it. Just as a mirror exists both within and without the image reflected, the Supreme Self exists both within and without the body. Yeah, huge, because we think that, well, a lot of people, prior to their spiritual awakening, they believe that consciousness is really a product of the brain, so that consciousness is manifesting within the body. But no, consciousness is actually universal. It's actually your mind itself is the size of the universe and even that really can't grasp it because it can't be defined by any sort of you know size it just is what it is but everything is contained within it right mm -hmm. so the body is actually within the mind and if it wasn't that way then we wouldn't be able to say that it exists because without consciousness you wouldn't be even aware that you had a body and a brain so ultimately it's within and without right so we got to cut through, you know, the dualities of existence, non-existence, within and without. Really, there's just one thing happening. One. Just as the same space exists, both within and without a jar, the timeless, all-pervasive one exists as totality. It is everything, right? And then there's a fundamental saying as well, that everything is God. But that's not to delude our minds thinking that we are God prior to transcending the ego to realize it, right? So we're not jumping the gun. So in this sense, we're believing and thinking that, yeah, we're part of God because everything is God. But we're also being humble and recognizing that we're still delusional beings and we haven't yet climbed out of the pits of the lower levels of consciousness even though we're on the way up right and then we can practice the teachings presented here right we can choose to be free now and i think the potent message of this chapter and what well let me know what you guys think what is the most impactful message for you guys for me that's what it is and that's why i had to take a moment to contemplate it is because mm -hmm. We have the power to choose, right? And then you tie it in with the teachings on meditation can actually bind you and keep you trapped. It's because we're not realizing that even though we're not quote unquote enlightened yet, we still have to act in this world. And then now we understand our dharma and duty and then understanding that we're all one, we're all one family. So then what is our duty once we know the things that we know? Do we just go sit in a cave and meditate until we attain enlightenment? But if we're not acting in the world, how are we going to purify the karma that we've accumulated by being in the world? And then to go and shun the world without being in it, how will we undo our karma when we can be in the world and then be kind, like he was saying in the first lines? Be compassionate, be loving, be forgiving, be kind. Well, how do you practice those when you're not amongst people? So very deep. Yeah, we got to practice the teachings. We got to choose to be free now, which means we can be free within the material existence and understanding that who we are. We can have a conceptual understanding of that and then we can be more free. We just need to choose to do it. Which yeah. is not to say that it is not possible in a cave to attain. Yeah, I'm not saying that either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just the, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Here comes my attachment again <laughs> to the yogis yeah, well, in the caves. <laughs> so the yogis are, you know, on a lo another level, and we got to keep in mind the amount of practice that they've already done. And even to have that pull in this lifetime also signals the amount of work that they've probably done in previous lifetimes. So anybody who has that sincere drive to you know, renounce the world and go into solitude and seclusion to practice severe austerity and practice. That is absolutely wonderful. And anybody drawn to do that, we offer 100% mm -hmm. support and prayers for anybody who's meditating in that capacity. May there be fruits and success in anybody pursuing enlightenment. May they all be successful, right? 
because as the as we're one in reality anybody raising their level of consciousness to such a high level attaining liberation moksha you know buddhahood all of those terms yeah it raises the whole field of mankind and it makes it more pop possible for other beings just in day-to-day -day life right so then there'll be a shift and then the whole field will rise and people will even become happier more content more joyful more peaceful without even understanding why that's how we raise the world so deep this was wow. chapter one wow. wow there is no easing into it hmm. he dropped the bomb right away you're not a person hmm. you're pure awareness consciousness yeah. itself yep the spirit and that needs to be realized the atman the jeev atman so i already touched on meditation could be a bond let me know what you guys think about that teaching and then choosing to be free is another really important lesson for me and then 1.2 Turn your attention to forgiveness, sincerity, kindness, simplicity, truth. Because just being dedicated to those values mm -hmm. is going to keep you elevating upwards on the spiritual journey, right? So be loving, be kind, be compassionate, be caring. But at the same time, you know, be grounded in mm -hmm. reality so then we're not deceived, right? So truth, right? When people are coming at us from other sides from states of illusion and ignorance and delusion yeah because there's a lot of this in the world right so we're being guarded by truth so we understand you know to the capacity that we're able to if we can understand these sorts of teachings even intellectually then that's like a, a guard that's the shields you know to protect us in our little bubble of understanding right and then we can still stick up for ourselves, defend ourselves, defend others if we need to, um, but from a higher point of view. So we're not succumbing to the same interaction. So we're not getting into hate. We're not getting into bitterness and despair and revenge. We're just like, hey, I understand the supreme reality this way. If you understand it differently, in a more limited way that doesn't see us as one then that's really too bad and we feel compassion thank you so much for joining us friends we're going to cover all 20 chapters here so we hope you join us for this very very special journey thanks peace